Hi, this is Professor Tiffany Martin with Medical Microbiology, and we are in Chapter 13, Viruses, and we are working our way through animal viruses, and we've done attachment and entry and synthesis, which was a big one, and now how do they get out? How do they go through release? Now, I'm remembering um, bacteriophage, it was always by lysis. Whether it was lytic or lysogenic, at the end of the day, that cell was still going to lyse. Um, animal viruses, a little more complicated, so let's talk about that. Okay, so um, bacteriophages always lice, um, but uh, eukaryotic viruses, animal viruses can do it different ways. Now, sometimes we still get lysis. So um, non-enveloped, so naked viruses, and sometimes the complex um, non-enveloped viruses, they actually still usually lice a host cell. Sometimes they leave by exocytosis, but that exocytosis doesn't Stay with them. They break out once they're outside the cell of that um, uh, vesicle, and it doesn't um, leave them with an envelope. Remember, if it comes in as a non-enveloped virus, that's what has to go out. So some viruses still will lyse the cell. Um, enveloped viruses, they actually need to acquire this envelope. So instead of lysis, they need to go through a process that allows them to take with them pieces of that host cell membrane. Um, this happens by a process called budding, and this is how they acquire their envelope. So let's look at the process of budding. All right, so we have synthesis, right? We had that. We have nucleic acid that gets made, or whatever it came in as, RNA or DNA, and then the capsid proteins get made, and we have created this assembly. We have this nucleocapsid that happens. So I now have a nucleocapsid and it needs to acquire an envelope. So what happens is the virus during that um, protein synthesis, the virus has made some matrix proteins. Those get laid down on the inside of the membrane, cell membrane of the eukaryotic host cell. The nucleocapsid will come and bind to these viral matrix proteins. Um, so it has a way to bind to those. Now, meanwhile, during protein synthesis, this is our host cell membrane, during protein synthesis, um, the synthesis portion of that, it made a whole bunch of glycoproteins, those viral protein spikes. Those got inserted into my host cell membrane. Remember that um, envelope is going to, um, has to contain attachment proteins or spikes. Those previously got inserted um, during the synthesis stage into this host membrane. All right, so now my nucleocapsid is bound to these viral matrix proteins on the inside. Um, that is going to push out, um, cause a chemical reaction that causes this membrane to kind of push out. And you can see how the, this virion, the membrane with its glycoproteins, um, encapsulates the nucleocapsid and pinches off until we get a free virion that's now been released into the environment and it has a functional envelope. All right, this process is called budding. And when we see this budding um, happening, we'll actually talk about viruses being shed. So instead of lysis, we're talking about this process of budding to acquire the envelope, and this results in viruses being shed. And so we kind of hear this um, sometimes on the news when they talk about um, viruses can still be shed, meaning they can still be um, cells. You've had this illness. Um, your cells may still be infected, and they still may be shedding virions. And so you can be still infectious passing these virions on, okay? Um, all right, what else do you need to know about budding? Um, most of the time we think about this as the outside cell membrane, and that's true for many different types of viruses, um, but some viruses will actually use the nuclear membrane to acquire an envelope or the endoplasmic reticulum membrane to acquire an envelope. So that sometimes happens. Either way, they form a pouch, um, encapsulates the nucleocapsid, and then it is shed um, outside of the cell membrane. All right, um, anything else we need to know on that? Um, oh, this is just another picture. This is the one that Pearson has in your textbook, and you can see that nucleocapsid. Um, it binds to inside membrane proteins, which causes it to kind of bud, push out. Um, and that envelope virus, that, that virus um, gains its envelope. It's already got those viral glycoprotein, and then it pinches off. And this is called budding. So, um, all right, so after viral infection, um, no matter how the virus leaves the cell, whether it's lysis 
or whether it's this budding, remember this cell has been damaged. The cell has been taken over by the virus. It is not doing any maintenance. It's not growing. Um, it's not replacing its cell membrane. So either way, this um, cell that has been invaded by a virus is a goner. It is going to die. It is lethal. Um, that changes in metabolism. So keep this in mind. Um, we can't really do anything once a virus has gotten inside of a cell. And so that's why it's very important to try to keep viruses from coming in contact with a cell in order to protect them. Burst size. Um, this is a eukaryotic virus, right? So an animal cell. So these eukaryotic cells are much larger than our prokaryotes and our bacteriophage. Burst size can be between three to 4,000. Um, and then we said polioviruses, 100,000, and then even um, 50 million. So that can be a big deal. So, all right, I think I'm going to stop this video and make this one short, and then we'll start pick up with the next one and talk about latency. Thanks, guys.